Everybody's always telling me to tune with a wide band, but is it really that important? Well, today I'm going to tell you why it is. Welcome to the garage. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And I wanted to do a supplemental uh, video today about kind of the basics on tuning uh, before we get into, you know, the meat and potatoes, the nitty gritty, the, the actual hands-on changing parameters on our vehicles. And today specifically, I want to talk about wide band versus narrow band. If you've uh, watched my other videos on the basics, I'll throw a link up in the corner over here. I suggest you go and watch them because there's some good information as a primer before you get into tuning. But if you've watched those other videos, you've heard me harp on uh, tuning with a wide band and why we don't tune with narrow bands. Now, I know what you're saying. Yeah, there's a lot of information out there about how to use narrow band uh, O2 sensors in, in the long-term and short-term fuel trims. But the big thing to remember is that there's a reason why it is a narrow band versus a wide band. So if you look at the signal that's coming off of the two devices, you've got a signal like this and a signal like that. Okay. So this signal here is what you would see on a narrow band in which you've got two states. You've got lean and you've got rich. And there is nothing really in between. This is like a light switch. This is generally a zero to one volt signal. And so you are switching in between two states all the time. And the, what the ECM then does is it interprets that data to try and determine whether or not you are running rich or lean. Now, if you have a wide band, you have a signal more like this. This is an analog signal and it's a one to five volt signal. And what that allows it to do is that you actually have stoic, lean, and rich, and this can actually float somewhere in between the points. So if you are actually running a perfect air to fuel ratio, this will just kind of follow that line through there. Whereas opposed to this, will kind of have a situation where it is constantly going up and down. So that is one of the key things to think about whenever we're tuning. If we are, say, tuned very rich to begin with, your narrow band is going to look like this. It's going to be high across the board. You're going to get a one. It's going to be on. That's all you're going to read. So that doesn't really tell us much whenever we're tuning other than we are rich. Same situation, if we are lean, all you're getting is a zero. We don't know how lean we are. And because of that, that's where the situation can be dangerous. This is what causes detonation and engine failure right here is an unknown state of lean. We just know that we're lean. But conversely, if we were to look at a wide band where we have rich, lean, and stoic here, we could be Oops, broke my little whiteboard here. We could be just a smidge lean, just right below stoic. So if this is one lambda or 14.7 on pump gas, we could actually be reading, oh, you know, maybe 1.1 lean or, or, you know, 15 lean on here as opposed to uh, reading just lean that we read on a narrow band. Same thing if we're rich, if we're up here, we could be running 0.9 lambda or 13 to one air fuel ratio. And it gives us something that we can look at versus our histograms that allows us to make adjustments to our curves, our fuel tables, things like that. So that is why it is important to tune with a wide band as opposed to a narrow band. Narrow band, I'll be honest with you, you can probably get it to work if you're doing something just like an intake and exhaust, but even then, if you want to make the best power for your vehicle, you need to be using a wide band. And so, if you're out there spending four or $500 for this tuning software, you really should pony up the extra couple hundred dollars and get a good wide band unit that works along with your tuning software. If you have any questions about narrow band versus wide band, you want me to go more in depth, just let me know. But I just wanted to stress why it was important to use a wide band air to fuel ratio or lambda 
Lambda, preferably, you know, sensor whenever we are tuning. And remember, all sensors are in Lambda. The gauge is just converting it to an air-to-fuel ratio based on what you are actually tuning on. So base, we are looking for a Lambda of one, doesn't matter if we're running propane, natural gas, gasoline, E85, methanol, you know, nitro, all of those are gonna burn at a Lambda of one. It is then the calculation that splits it over to 14.7 or eight and a half to one. All of those are just calculations versus Lambda. So instead of learning all of these different calculations for the different types of fuel, just tune on the one that everything's based off of. You'll save yourself a lot of headache, save yourself a lot of time. So, uh, you know, we're getting ready to break down into the, the nitty gritty, as I said. We're gonna start with the math tuning. Uh, I hope to have that out in the next three or four days. Uh, you know, I wanna go back through, verify everything looks good. I'm gonna make some changes on the truck. That way we can actually tune the truck, see the changes, what we need to do to do that and then we'll follow up with the SD tuning. So if you're looking forward to that, if you want to know more, hit the subscribe button down in the corner, throw a thumbs up if, you know, if you want to. You don't have to. Throw a thumbs down if you didn't like this. If you're stuck in your ways and you think that you can do everything with the narrow bands because there's already four of them on your car and you're not willing to pay that $300, put a thumbs down there and then jump in the comments and tell me why I'm wrong. You know, other than that, Stick around. We're getting ready to come out with some more content. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.